The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Hussein Abdelbaghi Akol Aghani, Vice President of the Republic of South Sudan. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. I have great pleasure in welcoming His Excellency Hussein Abdelbaghi Akol Aghani, Vice President of the Republic of South Sudan. I invite him to address the Assembly. Bismillah <coughs> Rahman Rahim Wabihi Mistain. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, fellow delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It is my distinct honor to address the 77 UN General Assembly today on behalf of His Excellency, self Akir Mayadid, the President of the Republic of South Sudan. I wish to congratulate the President-elect, His Excellency, Mr. Saba Korosi of Hungary, for being chosen to lead the 77th session of the United Nations of United Nations General Assembly. The government of South Sudan welcomes his themes of solution through solidarity, sustainability, and science. We stand to support sustainable policies and positive social transformation. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we commend the Secretary General for convening Transforming Education Summit, which, success, which successfully concluded this week. I'm pleased to report that South Sudan is committed to transform its education system through increasing its budget allocation for education to 17.5% of the national budget. This, is, this investment in education will enable us to build more school and improve teachers' pay and hence set the country on track to achieving SDG 4 by 2030. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the revitalized peace agreement on the, resolution, on the resolution of the conflict in the Republic of South Sudan signed on 12 September 2018 between the government and the opposition group ended the internal conflict in South Sudan. The parties are committed to the implementation of the peace agreement, which has improved the security in South Sudan. Owing to relative peace, the internally displaced and refugees have been voluntarily returning home. Although more formal reintegration remains a challenge due to limited resources. However, the government is doing whatever is possible to resettle the internal displaced persons and refugees. On the same note, I'm pleased to inform you that the command structure of National Unified Forces had been established. This is a major leap toward transformation and regularization of forces. Since the unification of the command structure in April 2022, there has been this escalation in clashes between South Sudan People's Defense Forces and the SPLA IO. In addition, the graduation of the first batch of 53,000 National Armed Unified Forces was successfully graduated on the 30th of August. 2022. I am equally pleased to inform you that the parties to the agreement have agreed on a roadmap to complete remaining tasks in the peace agreement, which will pave the which will pave way for a peaceful, fair, and credible election at the end of transitional period in 2025. Fellow delegates, ladies and gentlemen, through the thoughtful and targeted action, South Sudan has been able to contain the spread of COVID-19. The health effect on, of the pandemic in South Sudan has been surprisingly less pronounced than expected. 
more by the very low morbidity and fertility rates. As of 9 May 2022, only 17,513 confirmed COVID cases, including 138 deaths, have been reported since the start of pandemic. The current vaccination campaign continue to be effective with a coverage of 45% entire population over the age of 18. Excellencies, despite this positive health news, the pandemic had had negative effect on economy, on the economy, starting with the dramatic decline in domestic production and revenue collection, followed by a rising cost of living. These economic consequences are far reaching, severely weakening. For example, human capital formation, especially in education, as the lockdown deprived school age children of learning opportunities. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, in, 20, in April 2016, South Sudan ratified the Paris Agreement that seek to solidify a global response to the threat of climate change by keeping global warming to well below two degrees Celsius. South Sudan has strategized to build on nature-based solution, green infrastructure, and foster social economic recovery pathway centered on the climate change and national disaster. Recently, it became evident to us that the climate change is a real. The impact of climate change and the global warming has seen in manifested in the various parts of South Sudan. 70 to 80 percent of South Sudan has been affected by flood for the last three years in, role, in a row. Excellencies, the government of South Sudan, in its analysis of food insecurity between the period of February to March 2022, estimated 6.83 million people, 55.3 percent of the population, are facing acute food insecurity. 2.437 million are, are on emergency level. The severe food insecurity is worsening com by combining of shock, including flooding, for long drought, physical insecurity, and the effect of COVID-19. Excellencies, South Sudan is surrounded by the countries afflicted by conflict as a part of obligation to, to promote peace and stability in the region and beyond, South Sudan successfully mediated the armed conflict in Sudan, which resulted into the signing of peace agreement in Juba, 2020. South Sudan is ready to mediate the current conflict between the arms and the forces of freedom and change in Sudan so that Sudan can finally enjoy lasting peace. Recently, South Sudan also offered to mediate tension between Egypt and Ethiopia over the disagreement for the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. We further demonstrated willingness to mediate the, the, the internal conflict in Ethiopia between the Ethiopian government and the people and the tribe and Tigray People Liberation Forces. The Republic of, of South Sudan, furthermore, availed itself ready to mediate border issues between the Republic of Sudan and the, public, and the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. By participating in bringing regional peace and stability, South Sudan has demonstrated its ability as a reliable partners in quest of the, for the region and international peace and security. Further, the Republic of South Sudan is contributing one battalion of peacekeeping forces to be part of the East Africa forces to bring peace in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. The current war between Russia and Ukraine is unfortunate. And and, and this devastating 
to the lives and livelihood of the citizens of both countries and beyond. The war has led to a severe humanitarian crisis where millions are in dire need. This war has not only affected the two warring parties, but it has far-reaching effect on global economic. For, from the moral point of view, South Sudan government is calling on Russia and Ukraine to cease all forms of hostilities and resolve the dispute through diplomatic and constructive dialogue to abate further consequences. Excellencies, the government of South Sudan appreciate the critical humanitarian and technical support by member states in this forum, and it look forward to its continuation. To mitigate effect of flood, of flooding on the population and livelihood, South Sudan is donating $10 million to the WFP to alleviate the suffering of the affected displaced communities. However, we need the support of the international community to reach all the floods and drought affected area and communities. The President of the Republic of South Sudan will call a conference of all humanitarian organizations in South Sudan to coordinate humanitarian activities. The government of South Sudan is committed to providing security and protection to the relief workers. Together, we can save our planet by playing our roles and by supporting each other to mitigate effect of climate change and to come up with alternative method and solution based on available protocol. Finally, the implementation process of the revitalized peace agreement is facing numerous challenges and sanctions imposed by international partners on individuals and entities are deserve uh, this cause. As we make progress in implementation of the peace revitalized of the revitalized peace agreement on the resolution of the conflict in the Republic of South Sudan, we are calling upon international community and, U and UN in particular to revise in individual and targeted sanction arm embargo impose, impose on South Sudan to enable successful completion of remaining provision of the peace agreement outlined in the new roadmap. Thank you. In nombre... On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the Vice President of the Republic of South Sudan for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.